Hey, what's up, everyone? Daniel here from Never Enough Tech. As you probably know, WWDC, or Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference 2020, is looming, with a keynote set to start June 22nd, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, sharp. This conference is first and foremost dedicated to showing off the next versions of Apple's proliferating OS buffet. Watch OS, TV OS, iOS, iPad OS, Mac OS. So many updates to discuss next week. So many. But I'm not going to discuss software in this video. I want to talk about the physical goodies Apple is rumored to drop. Stuff I might be holding in my hands in the next couple weeks. First and foremost, the iMac. This is kind of personal and I don't often share, but I have been ramshackled with this late 2014 iMac. Just never got around to updating it. It just kept working well enough. But as of late, however, it's clear it's just not up to the task of editing my awesome videos. Just a little sluggish you are. Almost six years ago, I bought this sexy beast. It was quite the BFD at the time. 5K screen when 4K was still emerging and far from mainstream. I remember really poking my dad that my monitor had 16 times the number of pixels of his 720p HD TV. He played it cool, but I think it really got to him. Our relationship was never the same. Happy Father's Day. It received nice speed improvements over the previous version. The thin taper design was still kind of fresh. Well, six years are not super nice to an all-in-one and I'm quite ready for an upgrade. We're done with that. Bye-bye, iMac. Bye-bye. Well, a few Twitter people have been suggesting a new iMac will ship soonish, including Prosser and Love to Dream. However, Sonny Dixon really set a fire with this tweet that added a lot more specificity. New iMac incoming at WWDC, iPad Pro design language with Pro Display-like bezels, T2 chip, AMD Navi GPU, and no more Fusion Drive. Let's break this down. iPad Pro design language. This evokes an image of something like this. Hopefully a little bit bigger. There is something kind of amusing about adopting the iPad design language as the iPad shape looks a little like the 2000s boxy design. Only half joking here, there is a little bit of retro future being teased. Can't wait to see how Apple makes it happen. Had to bring it back. Bad planning. Hopefully the new iMac is less of this and more of this on the adjustability front. A precise mechanism in the arm counterbalances the display, making the height and angle adjustments feel almost weightless. Flexible, the iMac is not. I think we collectively hope for sleek, but might also hope that the body is thick enough to house decent computer parts and maintain an effective thermal design. Function over form, Apple. This will not be an ARM device like the iPad that functions without fans and can thrive with super limited thermal space. I hope we get larger sizes as 27 inches is not quite the showstopper it was eight years ago. I think the money's on a 23 and 27 to 30-ish inch option and hopefully it jumped to 6K on the larger. We can also hope the display adopts the mini-ish LED technology on the Pro Display XDR allowing for more precise backlighting and overall deeper levels of blacks. It's like definitely for sure that Apple is going to want to brag about how awesome the new screen technology is. I would guess the Pro Display XDR is our best hint at the direction. So Dixon mentioned Pro Display XDR bezels. Yeah, much thinner than the current iMac. Anyone would predict smaller bezels. Hopefully in a week, we'll see how much. The iMac will almost certainly get a T2 chip as the iMac is the only model being sold without it. To help jog your memory, the T2 chip augments the overall security of the device and much more. It manages Touch ID, real-time encryption of the SSD, support for always on Siri, enables image enhancements for FaceTime, provides an option for a secure boot process to limit malware hijacking, and enables faster media encoding and decoding. However, the T2, as I understand, does not support Face ID, so that's a bit of a bummer, as it definitely seems like the natural biometric method to put in an all-in-one. It seems to me putting Touch ID in a keyboard would be a security risk, maybe too much cost. A fingerprint scanner on the iMac body seems awkward and unsightly, so feeling a tinge of pessimism about biometric support. But my feelings don't really mean much. We'll see. AMD Navi would be the obvious GPU successor to the Radeon Pro. Unfortunately, the big upgrades like ray tracing are being reserved for the next-gen Navis, also called Big Navi or RDNA 2. 
Fixin is predicting a vanquishing of the disappointingly slow fusion drives and an all-in on solid state. I really hope this new commitment to solid state brings us a four and eight terabyte option, like the MacBook Pros. I was somewhat shocked that the current top storage tier for the iMac is only two terabytes of solid state storage. Yikes. Really, really living up to its non-pro name there. The CPU is not mentioned in Dixon's tweet, but one would expect a move to Intel's Comet Lake 10th gen processors replacing the 9th gen Coffee Lake processors currently in the IMAX. Comet Lake offers up to 10 cores and has base speeds of up to 3.7 gigahertz and a thermal velocity boost, we could all use one of those in the morning, of up to 5.3 gigahertz. <laughs> Coffee Lake's top tier processors only had eight cores. Should note that with this expected upgrade, there would really be an uncomfortable overlap with the iMac and the aging iMac Pros. With the upper end of iMacs moving into probably upper middle performance tiers of the iMac Pros. Not to mention the iMac Pros will immediately look like a dope once we see the iMac redesign. It's gonna be a really awkward family reunion when little brother is showing out in front of big brother. Lastly, let's hope the price stays somewhat in line with the current iMac. Not sure we're interested in $8,000 iMacs. So hopefully it's dropping next week. Looking at the current shipping times of the 27 inch iMacs, it does seem that some funny business is churning in the background. Moving on. Prosser tweeted a new Apple TV is ready to ship back in May. WWDC, I suppose, is the most probable event where it'll be announced. Bit of a sad story, one of my Apple TVs recently died. So anyway, I'm more excited about this refresh than I would normally be. Easier to justify replacing a broken thing than getting a marginal update. Nothing really, really exciting to announce here. The Apple TV is not expected to get sexier, but who cares? Per Prosser's tweet, it is expected to get a spec bump from the A10X, which powers the 2017 iPad Pro, to the A12X, which powers the 2018 iPad Pro. Uh, that's neat. This update, I would say, is the kind of routine maintenance needed to keep Apple Arcade running smoothly into the future, as we should expect more and more graphically complex games. Also, it should support more processor-hungry functionalities in future releases of tvOS. Also look for a storage boost with a 64 and 128 gigabyte option, up from the current 32 and 64 gigabyte option, allowing a little more breathing room for those downloading tens or maybe hundreds of arcade games. In terms of hardware updates, maybe expect the white outline to move from uh, the menu to the to the TV button. I do, I do, I do hope they move towards making the Apple remote more tactile. We'll see, or maybe not. We'll survive and pull through either way. John Prosser has also tweeted that WWDC may be the venue where Apple finally reveals the AirTags. I've been using all kinds of object trackers for over six years now, as I seem incapable of placing my stuff in a regular location. Personally, I've really settled on the tile line. I do have to admit, and it's quite perplexing to me, that the latest models do not seem as reliable as the previous generation. It'll work fine now that it's been close to my phone, but across the house you have to walk around a few minutes. I've had one of these pro tiles just stop working, and the ones that do work really aren't as responsive as they used to be. A fairly long delay before it's recognized and starts making noise. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I uh, may have a straying eye. I feel bad for the tile, but it seems there are reasons why I would jump ship. According to 9to5Mac, AirTags would be expected to leverage Apple's U1 chip that would provide a much higher level of fidelity on location than Bluetooth, perhaps culminating in an augmented reality visual cue as to where exactly your item is. It can be difficult to locate your item with sound alone, especially if the item is stuck in the couch you are. AirTag would also benefit from the vast Find My Stuff network, so you should always have a good sense of where your item or tag is. I guess people can remove the tag. Animals. It also seems Apple will include functionality that one might otherwise have to pay a subscription for, Tile, like getting warned if you leave a location without your thing, often referred to as geofencing. Just to temper your expectations a bit, it's not clear how many form factors Apple will release. Maybe only one. So where Tile has form factors for just about everything you would want to track, maybe the initial AirTag offering will have a form factor that works well for bags and keys, but not remotes, headphones, sunglasses. I'm also a little bummed at the prospect of a removable battery. I think that makes the device a little less reliable, making it more likely that the battery gets dislodged. I would have much preferred a wireless recharge option, 
though it's not clear if that's realistic for a tracker. Just some gossip to chew on, hopefully we'll know more next week. Last but not least, John Prosser tweeted that over-the-ear headphones would be released at WWDC. I think everyone is comfortable with the expectation that these headphones will be named AirPod Studio. Though I try to hide it, I am certainly a collector of all things headphones. So it's not crazy to imagine I might partake in this little release as well. But why should a sane person get excited about these One More Studio headphones in a pretty saturated market? I'm going to steal a lot from Mac rumors for the remainder of this rant. I'll be frank, I don't think we have any firm sense of the styling other than two cups on a band. We have these glyphs and a glow up of these glyphs from Mac rumors. In terms of sound quality, I don't think we've heard much how it might differentiate itself from the Sonys and Boses of the world, or whether it'll even live up to those standards. There doesn't seem to be any rumors that users will be able to select various sound profiles like concert hall, small room, etc., like the Sony flagship headphones, though it is expected that you will be able to set the EQ, which is pretty standard. I think we can take a whole lot of clues from the AirPod Pros. We'll get a normal mode, a noise cancellation mode, and a transparency mode, which is especially useful when having a conversation. But you know, be a good person and take off your darn over-the-ear headphones if you're talking to another human being. Really embracing my new dad role. I suspect there will be touch controls and an ever-present Siri waiting to screw up your next request. Also expect audio to pause when the band is resting on the neck, analogous to pulling out an AirPod. Some expected standout features. There will not be a left or right speaker. The headphones will auto-detect which ear is in which cup and adjust sound accordingly. So no more of this. In addition, it's rumored that the AirPod Studio will have a modular quality, allowing you to switch out ear cups and headbands to achieve certain looks. Adaptable, the AirPod Studios are. While I am one to maybe get distracted by fancy colors, I would be most pleased if these removable parts came in different materials. You see, when I work out, I tend to perspire. Perspiration is not wonderful for leather-like materials. Really yellow padding. As such, I don't ever use these kinds of headphones outside the house. Too dangerous, which is kind of a bummer. If there was something like a mesh option that could more easily recover from my hard work and maybe even be washable, that would be a game changer for me. Otherwise, I'm stuck with these for my active over-the-ear headphones, which is fine. Safety first. Luckily, there are rumors that suggest Apple is considering different material tiers. Leatherish, and a more fitness-focused, breathable material. Fun fact, I wear the Aftershocks Aeropex maybe 10 times more than the rest of these combined. These are the ultimate fitness headphones, period. All right, way too much speculation this close to WWDC. Hope you didn't hate the journey. Take some time to subscribe if you like these kinds of videos. Gonna wrap this up. Catch you on the next one. Lost in the couch you are. Well, now you work.